In previous lecture, I have been telling you about the type of cases in which we can actually model fixed law for our convenience. And this is the first case, equimolar contradiffusion. From now on, you might encounter it from as EMD or SCT. And I want to show you that we can manipulate several cases so that the mathematical expression is very nice, or let's say that the actual model is very simplified. And as you can imagine, equimolar counterdiffusion implies two type of diffusions in which the overall mole flow or flux, because it's through the same area, will be equal to zero because we have A going from left to right and B going from right to left. So if you were to account for the total mole transfer, it will be zero. But actually, we have molecular diffusion, meaning that the concentration of A will decrease in this side and will increase in this side. And the same is true for B. The concentration of B will be decreasing and the concentration of B will be increasing right here. So try to imagine cases in which you could have that, especially for gases. I think it's very uh, intuitive, the case. Actually, here's a tip. And talking about that, let me actually draw the case. So we got this long pipe between two bulbs. Of course, they not necessarily have to be bulbs. They could be storage tanks and so on. But for the sake of this experiment, I'm going to assume this is A, this is B. Both are at the same pressure and temperature conditions. Because the problem is that if we didn't have the same pressure here or here, you will see a flow mostly due to momentum transfer and not due to mass transfer. But if we have the same pressure and temperatures, the gradients, you know that, let's say that we have a red gas right here and we are watching through this glassware and we have gas B, which is actually invisible to human eye. You know almost for certain that this gas, if you open this bulb, and let's say this is red gas, you will see that the red gas will go from left to right. And not only that, you will start seeing that the right hand side will start getting more red. And the left hand side will start decreasing in red color, not only because it's going to left to right, but also because the invisible gas is taking place right here. The overall, let's say, calculation, since there is no change in pressure and temperatures, must be due to actual concentrations or amount of substance, which is the typical mass transfer case. This is binary case, okay? So let's start with the math. Recall from previous calculations and lectures that the total flux of A, flux of A, let it be in this pipe, is due to two main things. The actual diffusion, which will be accounted for JA, and the bulk velocity. So we, here we have total molar flux of A will be equal to the molar flux of A due to molecular diffusion, which we model with fixed law. And then we have molar flux of A due to bulk velocity, which we typically model as concentration times velocity of the fluid. Concentration, remember, is small divided by cubic or volume, let's say cubic meter times velocity, let it be mole, uh, sorry, meter per second. So if we perform this calculation, we get mole per unit area per unit time, which is the same as JA, molecular diffusion, and the same as molar flux. So we are great with the concentrations. Now, typically you will also see molar fractions. So you can do these as well. Uh, molar fraction times the total mole flow rate so if you were to know the total molar flow rate, you can substitute. So if you don't know velocity and concentration and you have molar fraction and total flow, you could do these. The units are still the same. Remember, molar fraction is unitless and molar flow will be the same as molar flow, of course. In the very specific case of A, equimolar counterdiffusion, EMD, for a binary species, we know that the total mole flow, which is N, will be the molar flow of A and the molar flow of B. Now, interestingly, we know that if we were to take absolute values, 
it's the same because it's equimolar. So if we have five moles of A going from left to right, we should have five moles of B going from right to left. So in order to specify it for the position, and this is very important, guys, remember that fixed law, it's all about position, not about, uh, let's say, just magnitudes. You need to know the distance as well. So we are going to use a negative sign to denote that it's going from right to left. And if it's positive, it will be from left to right. I'm going to substitute to this part right here, which is nothing more than the total mole flow or molar flux of A. This will be due to diffusion and this will be due to bulk velocity. And probably you guess it, this is equal to zero because I don't want to repeat it that much, but this is the opposite direction. So if you were to account for the total mole flux, not the mole flux of A, not the mole flux of B, but the total mole flux, you will see that there is actually no change in moles. So going back here, you will see the same amount of moles here, the same amount of moles here, and the same amounts, amount of moles here. So for you, as a spectator, you will say, well, there is no actual total mole flux change. So what we wanted to do, or what I wanted to show you in this case, is that for this specific case, the molar flux of A equals the molar flux of A due to diffusion, only diffusion, because we just made math mathematically cancellation of the molar flux of A due to bulk velocity. So this is a zero for a binary case in equimolar counter diffusion, okay? And we know, fortunately, guys, from previous lectures, a fixed law is perfect for this case because we know that JA, or the molecular diffusion of A, can be described with the diffusivity coefficient of A in B, the change in concentration, and the change in distance, which we do know. We know how much the positioning is changing. Typically, we will see 0 to, I don't know, in literature, you might find this as delta, the difference between these two points. So we know this, we can get this from books, and the changing concentrations, well, are typically given. Uh, okay, this is what we proved. And what I want to show you as well, guys, is that in this case, because this is binary case, ideal gas law, you can also assume that the diffusivity of B in A is the same as A and B. So getting back here, these diffusivities will be the same for the right-hand side and the left-hand side. If that is true, and we also know that the molar flux of A and B is the same but in negative signs, we can also assume that the diffusion of B will be the same as the diffusion of A but with negative sign. Anyways, let's continue with A, which is the main focus of the, of the exercise or case. And we want to develop this little part because we may use molar compositions, we may use concentrations, and we may use partial pressures. And this is a little bit pain in the ass because, to be serious guys, there will be a lot of cases in which we will need to find a specific value for molar fractions, or if you get a coefficient for concentrations, or if you're working with partial pressures, it's very important for you guys to know how to change from one another easily. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to change concentration for partial pressure. And for that, we need the ideal gas law, which states, and this is also very important, guys, if you wanted to use the C compressibility factor or other type of real gas equations, such as the Virial equation, Peng Robinson, maybe Radley Kwong, or Suave equation, and so on, you can do so. It's, of course, right now not within our scope of the course, but you could, in theory, do it. And the idea is to get the molar concentration and partial pressure here. So the way we do so is if we force concentration in this equation, which is very easy, you just need to send the volume divided. And we get molar amount of A divided by volume, partial pressure of A divided by the ideal gas constant and temperature. And this is what we get. Concentration of A equals partial pressure of A divided by RT, which conveniently is what we needed. Concentration of A 
now expressing partial pressure of A. So what I'm going to do is substitute in concentration of A, and we have this part right here, which is partial pressure of A divided by RT. Which can be further simplified, guys. RT will be constant because temperature is not changing, and R is, by definition, a constant. So just once again, guys, in this specific case, I want to remind you that the molar flux of A equals the molar diffusion of A. Just in this case, please do not try to apply this logic to other cases. This is only for equimolar counter diffusion for a binary uh, mixture. And so I get this part right here, which is a first order differential equation because we have the differential of pressure and differential of concentration. Oh, sorry, off position. So what I'm going to do, this is relatively easy to solve. I'm going to pass the differential of position to the left, differential of pressure to the right, and I'm going to integrate with the following limits. Of course, I know I'm going from 0, 1 to 0, 2, which of course, if you know that 0, 1 will be 0, you could simply add 0, 2, or C, 2, or just a C, or the differential value, which is the total path or mass transfer or molecular diffusion and pressures is more interesting at position one if we're talking about a we need to use this partial pressure which is partial pressure of a in position one which will be high you know that the left hand side is higher because it's moving to the right hand side and partial pressure of a in position two will be lower okay solving for this thankfully this is constant and if you were using real gas equation, maybe this is not constant because if you have something depending on pressure or partial pressure of A, you will not be able to take this out of the integral. And when you integrate for this, it's essentially the difference of C and the difference of partial pressures. Solving for JA, which at the same time, we already know that this is the total molar flux of A, we get this equation. And for B, you can do the same. I will invite you to do literally the same, but take care of that negative sign, which essentially is the same. We know that the total molar flux is zero for the scenario. JB will be now uh, describing NB. So you need to further continue. You will get the same values. But more importantly, guys, if you wanted to reference versus A, you know that, well, that negative sign is always present. So either you change the pressures or you change the C values. In my opinion, guys, if you are using D, it's more, let's say, counterintuitive to use a negative path or distance. So what I do is either take away this negative sign, or if you want to keep the negative sign, I change the pressures, which is given us here. This is the one we will use for A, and depending on what you prefer, you may prefer this one because it's similar to A. We have the same diffusivity of A and B, the negative goes outside, but as you can see here, two and one, one and two. The delta C is the same right here. Perfect. So we are done with case A, equimolar counter diffusion.